In the last episode, we got a dash pro down from more than 400 queries to just five and about 98 milliseconds for more than 700,000 orders in my test environment. But why run any queries for data that rarely changes? I'm Harris from Laravel News, and today we'll explore Laravel 12's flexible caching, a game changer for dashboard performance. Traditional caching has a problem. When cache expires, users wait while it rebuilds, right? Laravel 12 flexible caching solves this with stale while revalidate pattern. So with flexible caching, users never wait. They get instant responses even when the cache is expired. Let's analyze what data we should cache. We have the summary, and this changes when new orders come in, so potentially hourly, right? Top customers, which changes slowly, maybe daily, I would say. We have the daily breakdown, which is eventually historical data that rarely changes. And we also have the average orders per customer that changes with new orders or customers. I can see a clear winner in this one. Different data needs different cache durations. Let's implement flexible caching for each. Let's go back to our code. We'll go ahead and keep this service as well, the optimized service, and create a new one. We're going to call this flexible cache service. And we're going to use this to showcase the flexible caching that Laravel provides us. Let's go to our service. Let's create a new one. We're going to name this flexible cache service. And this one will extend our optimized sales report service. So let's extend the optimized sales report service. Perfect. The first thing we are going to add here is the function called dashboard report. So let's go ahead and do that. Dashboard report. We have the exact same properties like we had in the other dashboard report functions we added in the other services. This will be an array, of course. And let's return the parent dashboard report for now. And let's only pass the period. So we would like to cache the result, right? What does a cache need? Cache needs a cache key, an identifier inside our cache. So let's add the cache key here. We're going to name this dashboard and we're going to use the period just to make it different per period. And we will also append the hour here. So now let's format that in year, month, day, and we also need the hour. So we want to build a cache. What do we need in this case? We would like the cache facade and then let's call flexible which is what we mentioned earlier. Let's import the class, support facade cache. And here we're going to pass three parameters. The first one is the cache key. The second one would be an array of two integers in this case. So this flexible method takes an array with two values. The first, we're going to add 300, which means that it will serve fresh data for five minutes. Then we add a second parameter. In this case, let's add 600. So this means that after those 600 seconds, we serve stale data for another 10 minutes while we refresh the data in the background. And this is crucial. And the third parameter here is going to be a callback. At the callback function, let's don't forget to pass the period because we need that. And the callback will be that we will return the parent dashboard report. So we can here we return that and let's just return what's inside cast flexible result directly. Nice. So we just build our first cast flexible part. Let's go ahead and do something similar for top customer optimized method. So we'd like to have the get top customers optimized method. Again, we pass the period and we have a default limit set to three. Again, we would like to have a cache key in this case, which we're going to mention as top customers. Again, we will base this on the period and on the limit because we have those two parameters. So period and limit. Let's close that down. We are ready. And again, let's return cache flexible. We pass again the cache key and we are going to increase this instead of 300 and 600 to 1800 in both cases. We have the callback here and let's return the parent call to the top customer optimized. We forgot to pass the limit as a parameter. Let's pass this here. Perfect. This is ready as well. Let's move on now to our daily breakdown. We'll do something similar. So we call the get daily breakdown optimized. Again, we pass the period, another cache key. Let's make this daily breakdown, which is based on the period, but we also need to base this on the day. So let's use this, but remove the hour part. Let's return cache flexible. Now, because this is daily, 
Let's switch the values to 3600 for both of them. And we will return the parent call to the breakdown optimized method. Perfect. We have two more. The first one is the summary. So get database summary is here. Again, we passed the period. Now we have a cast key and we need this to be again based on the hour because we mentioned earlier that this might change on an hourly basis. Let's do that here, pass the hour and let's return again cast flexible. Let's close this down. Because this is based on the hour, we are going to have the same values like we had at the beginning. So 300 and 600 here. Let's return the parent call to the database summary and we pass the period. Last but not least, we want to have the average orders per customer as well. So get average orders per customer. This is the only one left. And we again need this to be a period as a property. Another key here, and this one is again hourly. So average orders per customer, we use the period and we also use the current hour as well. Let's return, cast flexible, close that down. Again, because this is hourly, we need the 300 seconds and 600 seconds here as well. Let's call the parent method, get average order per customer, and we're ready. Its method has appropriate cast times based on how often the data changes, like we mentioned. So top customers get 30 minutes because they change slowly, while the summary gets five minutes for fresh data. Let's go back to our dashboard controller again, and let's update our controller to use the new cast service as well. I will add the mode parameter so we can compare performance. So we're going to get the request mode and we will default that to cast mode. Now we have three modes, like we mentioned, we have the original one, which is the initial service. So the sales report service, we have another one called optimized, which as you guessed is our optimized sales report service. And last but not least, we have the cast one, which is the new one we just added. So up here, flexible, cast service and we're ready let's remove the comment code and the report now will be based on this match query by default it uses cast mode but we can add for example mode equals optimized to compare uncast performance let's test this out let's go to our browser and let's visit our dashboard i just noticed that i passed the properties inside the function instead of use so please don't do that <laughs> go ahead and just pass them inside the use method instead for all of those functions. Cool. Before going back to our browser, clean up CAS just to make sure we have CAS cleaned. Let's test this out. First, I load the dashboard. Let's go to telescope. And we'll see now that our request was 390 milliseconds. Let's go deeper, scroll down. And you see we had seven queries in this case. Now watch what will happen if we refresh the dashboard. Let's go back to dashboard, give another refresh, go back to telescope. Can you see this? 32 milliseconds only. Let's go deep now, scroll down, and you'll see now that we get only three queries. How cool is that? As you can see, we only have the session queries now, so zero business queries. And here's the magic of flexible casting. Even after five minutes, when the cast is stale, users still get instant responses. So let's create a benchmark and measure what we have achieved so far with flexible caching. So we are now back in our web route file. I just added this benchmark flexible so we can see exactly what we achieved so far. As you can see, we have three measures in this case. The first one will be when we have no cache, when we do the optimized sales default service, when we execute that, and the dash report is based on the month. The second one we have is for the flexible cast, but when we have the cold cast. So this is when our cast boots up. We call flexible cast service, dashboard report is based on the month. And now that this has already been hit once, we'll do a second query, flexible cast, but this time we have the warm part because we have already hit cast once. Let's go and visit benchmark flexible. I'm gonna go to the browser. And open up a new tab, Fle best flexible. Let's wait. Let's zoom in. Can you see the results? How cool is this? So no CAS, 129 milliseconds. With flexible CAS, 104. 
<laughs> and once we hit the cast warm, 0.2 milliseconds. I think this is very cool. We are doing great so far. We have successfully implemented flexible casting. Our dashboard now serves instantly from CAS, and when CAS expires, users still get immediate responses while Laravel updates in the background. But we're not done yet. Next episode, we'll explore CAS memo to eliminate duplicate CAS hits within the same request. And this is perfect for when we have multiple components that need the same data. If flexible casting just made your apps faster, hit that like button, subscribe to Laravel News for more videos, and don't forget to hit this hype button in your mobile app. See you in the next one.